Hi, and welcome to the series uh, from Habanera Consulting Group called The Analyst, The Developer, and An Infrastructure Guy uh, talk about various SharePoint 2010 functionality. Uh, and today we're going to cover the Document ID service. I'm Michael Bissarek, a Solution Specialist uh, here at Habanera Consulting Group. And uh, I'm joined by two very fine fellows with uh, Yaroslav Pensarsky yep. and uh, Charles Cote. So uh, Yaroslav, if you want to do a bit of a yep. bit of an intro. Thanks, Michael. So yeah, as Michael mentioned, uh, uh, my name is Yaroslav and I'm an actual developer. Mo most of my work here at Habanera is development and uh, uh, team um, lead activities. And yeah, recently uh, SharePoint 2010 came out and there's a lot of uh, cool new features. So. Uh, uh, one of the things today, we're going to take a look at the uh, Document ID service. And, and Charles? <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Uh, I'm Charles Cote. I'm in the infrastructure team here. Uh, I do um, um, I work a lot with SharePoint 2010 when it comes to installation and uh, configuration of the, uh, uh, the platform. And I uh, work a lot with the customization of the scripts to automate some of the processes around uh, configuring the environment. Awesome. So uh, the document ID server. So, so, so what is it? It's 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 a new feature within within SharePoint 2010, which really solves two major business issues that, that were inherent in in MOST 2007. It really solves the issue of tying content to an actual URL based location. For those that that use MOST 2007, there was an issue where if you sent someone a link to a particular document within SharePoint, and that document was was then moved because the link to to the document was was location based, all of those links would be uh, broken. Now with this new document ID service, what this does is it actually assigns a unique ID. As long as we know that unique identifier, then then we can find it. The other thing that, that it does is it, it, that it gives us the ability to uniquely identify documents. And this is really important in an enterprise content management scenario. What does it solve? Um, like I've said, losing content when it, when it moves within SharePoint was always a major problem. And I'm sure Charles has had many experiences where people have called him out trying to find content when it's been moved. So this is going to solve this, this issue along with uh, identifying content as, as well. And the great thing about the, the document ID server is really it's very con configurable from an out-of-the-box perspective, but it's also infinitely extensible as well through, uh, through some Visual Studio custom coding, which Yaroslav is going to go through uh, in a moment. So just a bit of uh, background of the document ID service. It, it is a site collection scoped feature. Out of the box, the document IDs will only be unique per site collection. So this, this is uh, something that actually gets quite a few people confused. You can configure it if you do it smartly by, by having a unique site collection document ID prefix. When we enable this, this feature, each document, so things that exist in document libraries and within lists, will get a unique ID. Um, existing documents usually require an, an action to be performed, but also you can, you can run a couple of timer jobs to, to make this happen. Some other extensibility options is you can actually change the document ID format to something a little bit more, more palatable out of the box and we'll go through that. And like other document management systems, we can use this ID now to, to, to search for content. Um, and it's a really great search to where if users remember that, that you need a unique document ID, they can essentially search for that piece of content uh, really, really quickly, regardless of where they are in the system. Um, unfortunately, it's only supported in libraries. Um, it's not supported in, in lists, so your list items will not get uh, IDs attached to it. Some configuration options which we'll go through, um, you know, we can choose the format of the document ID. Yaroslav is going to go into creating our own document ID. Uh, okay, so so here we are at our, at, our, at our site and it's called the Habanero Collaboration Area. This is just an out-of-the-box site, site collection which we've uh, created. There's a few documents within a document library, nothing's really uh, special here. We've also got a record center that we've set up uh, using the records management template. Um, and we've also got a document library just, just using the document center template. <clears throat> now in order to uh, get your documents to have unique document identifiers, there's a few configuration steps that we have to do first. So if we just go to site actions, site settings, um, and go to our site collection features, um, we can see that the document ID, document ID service is actually a, a site collection feature. Um, we've already activated this um, but that's basically what you have to do to get this feature to come come up 
Now if we go back to site collection admin, what we'll see is we get a new we get a new option here within uh, the site collection administration settings, which is the document ID settings. And within here, this is really where we have the ability to configure our document IDs. So we have the option to assign document IDs or, or not. Um, if you've got the feature in enabled, you know, you might as well be assigning document IDs, otherwise it's, it, it's sort of pointless. Um, and here we have the ability now to, um, to have a prefix string. So we've chosen to have our prefix as hab01. And once again, you can choose to have any particular string that you like here. Just keep in mind is when, when SharePoint does assign does assign documents it will put in put two numbers at at the end of that string as well but it's best to keep something short um, you don't want to have document IDs with you know with with huge um, sort of prefix strings which users will have to remember so we click on OK now um, and go back to uh, home so now now that I've the, now that I've actually enabled this feature there's actually a couple of a uh, couple of timer jobs that, that we have to run don't we Charles Yes, so SharePoint actually will automatically take care of running those jobs, but if you're doing some testing and you want to validate that uh, uh, your document IDs are being assigned uh, quickly, you can go to the central administration and under the monitoring section, you do have the uh, timer jobs definition. So, and from there, scrolling down, there's two timer jobs uh, that um, handle the document ID uh, functionality the document uh, ID assignment job as well as the document ID enable visible job which uh, enables a feature on the sites that are being targeted and uh, so by clicking on the job itself it will bring you to a page uh, providing you more information about the job itself uh, giving you the schedule uh, assigned to it and there's a button um, at the bottom of the form uh, called run now that will trigger that job for you automatically as you click on it so you don't have to wait for that job to to be handled at SharePoint by the time of job. Mm -hmm. Click so, on run now. Okay. That will actually put that job on the queue and we can run the other one. Uh, the assignment job as well. Okay. And that will take care of uh, running those jobs uh, immediately. Okay, and you can also see the running jobs as well, can't you Charles, if we just uh, That's right. running jobs or they've just, just run, but if we look at job history for example, we can see that these uh, these just ran here as well. That's right. So in this case, uh, because we have a really small set of uh, uh, sample data, that the jobs run really quickly. Uh, in a large environment, you can anticipate this to be a bit more uh, uh, consuming on the servers that, running, that are running that job. Uh, and you would see a bit uh, more of a time lapse for executing the full assignments. Yeah, awesome. So um, if we just go back to our collaboration area, let's do a bit of a refresh here. Uh, by pressing S S5 and, and let's see if we actually have some 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 document IDs here. So let's look at our access services capacity guide. If we just view the properties of, of anything now we can see that we've actually got a unique document ID um, identified. Now if we look at the URL on the bottom now we can see that the document ID, the actual string that it comes back is the document is not by, lo by location. We can see that what we do, we actually go to the underscore layouts, doc ID re redirect, and the ID there, the hab01-5-1, is this unique document ID that has been assigned to this particular piece of content. So what this means now is that if we just copy this, for, for, for instance, and we go to our document center, one of the things that the document center does is has the ability to find by document ID. Now if we go into here and put in our unique document ID and press enter, we can see that, that SharePoint is actually going to bring this document straight up. Let that come up. There we go. So uh, it's always interesting reading the performance and capacity requirements of access services. But we can see that that document comes up st straight away. So from a, from a user's point of view, it's a real easy way to be able to, if they remember a, a document ID that they're working in, they can simply go in there and click click that as well. Okay, and a, another thing as, as well which is really important is the ability to kind of keep track of these documents as we move them through the life cycle. So for instance, in a, in a normal records management scenario, we want to usually move the content to, to a record center. So Let's say, for example, that a user is, is, is using this and they know that their document ID is hab01-5-3. If we just copy that, that, that ID now and send this piece of content to the record center, um, which is a very common thing in a records management scenario, we can see that what's going to happen is this is going to get sent over. Let's go back here now. So we can see that that's actually been 
that's actually being sent sent over now. So if we go to the record center now um, and go to the records library, we can see that uh, we've just sent this sent this over this uh, designing large lists maximum performance. Now, if we look at the properties of this as as well, we can see that that document ID has been kept. So once again, this is an example of. Uh, you know, keeping a unique identifier throughout the entire life cycle of a particular piece of content. So that's some out-of-the-box configuration options. Um, I'm going to hand it over to, to Yaroslav and he's going to explain how to uh, implement your own document ID provider. Thanks, Michael. So as Michael was showing, right, we have uh, document IDs that that are assigned as, as we upload our documents. And in some cases, in different organizations, your requirements in, that, in terms of that document ID uh, may change. So we've we've seen how SharePoint allows you to actually uh, predefine the prefix before your document ID. But what if you have, let's say, I don't know, a small library where you want to have, uh, you know, a bar you know, book or, or document barcodes and uh, you know, document IDs matching those particular barcodes, or any other scenario is kind of like that, where where you need to have your own document ID pattern. Um, for instance, vendor slash department slash you know number things like that. So in that case, uh, the document ID uh, uh, provider can be extended. All you need to do you need to uh, inherit from a document provider abstract and extend uh, your own you know document ID uh, provider with existing methods there uh, by overriding those ex existing methods and uh, providing your own functionality in those existing me methods. So let's take a look at how that's done. So first of all, we're going to be using uh, we're going to be using a sample because uh, obviously we're not going to go through all of the code here. So I'm going to give you the uh, location where you can download the sample. Uh, and uh, take a look at it yourself, and you know, uh, try things out and deploy it. So if you if you search for doc ID MSDN and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see this sample custom document ID provider, which gives you kind of explanation of things, how things are, and actually download the code, um, and download the code for this particular uh, sample uh, as a part of the SDK. So um, let's go ahead and, uh, and see what that sample looks like and what's involved in creating your own custom uh, document ID provider. So here's my, uh, basically, uh, a document center here. It's, it's kind of blank, right? And uh, the sole purpose of it is just to demonstrate the behavior in some of the, uh, some of the scenarios that's, uh, that's basically once we deploy our document ID provider. So, uh, I'll, I have a Visual Studio uh, open here with the, with the actual sample that I've referred to earlier, downloaded from MSDN. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna show you what's involved in, in creation of, of that particular solution similar to that one. So um, you have to have a Visual Studio 2010 installed um, on your machine and uh, we're just gonna create a SharePoint, uh, we're just gonna create a SharePoint, uh, new SharePoint project and uh, Right here, we're just gonna create an empty SharePoint project, and I'm just gonna give it a default name. So the reason, so we're gonna deploy it as a farm solution. The reason why we're gonna be uh, using an empty SharePoint project is so we can add the, uh, so we can take advantage of the feature capability, because you know the uh, w one of the things that you're gonna have to do after you create your own document ID. Uh, provider, you have to deploy it, and one of the ways that you can achieve the deployment is through the uh, through the uh, feature capability. Because all you need to do for your particular testing in your dev machine is just click, right click, and deploy solution, and that'll deploy your document ID and uh, register it and uh, perform all sorts of uh, functions like that, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But uh, obviously, in your in your deployment scenario, where you're gonna in, in a larger organization, you would give your, uh, your infrastructure uh, guys, you would give a WSP a file or the solution file and they'll deploy it as part of the solution uh, so they can retract it later on if they have to, in case there's a problem or in case you want to upgrade the document uh, provider and things like that. So I'm not, I'm not going to start from a scratch here, I'm just going to switch to that sample here and kind of uh, show you what's, what's different. So it's the, same, uh, it's the same structure here, we have one feature and that feature is going to be deploying our document ID provider. It's not going to be deploying it in the fashion of you know dragging and dropping elements here. It'll be deploying it through the uh, through the event receiver. We'll take a look at that in a moment. And uh, there's 
there's all there's to it. So there's this uh, class here, um, inheriting from Microsoft Office Document Management Document ID Provider. So if we take a look at the Document ID Provider um, class, uh, there's a couple of uh, this particular ab abstract class has a couple of methods here, and we're going to be overriding some of them to get the uh, the functionality that we want. So um, particularly, we're going to be overriding um, get sample document ID text. And remember, when we were submitting a document through the document ID uh, document center here over here, we had the sample of how what's the format that document ID should look like so this is where you kind of give user a hint how their document ID is going to look like and obviously there is no logic to it you just kind of hard code it I guess and then show it to them or uh, pull it up from some sort of a configuration options and show it to them um, there's this get document URLs by ID so here you actually this is the meat of the whole document ID provider right this is where you get the URL uh, sorry, get the ID from the user, th which they entered here, and then uh, perform your actual search, right? So there's no magic to it. There is a magic for a user, but for you, there is no magic to it. You actually perform the search and give them the URLs to documents. Uh, you, you notice that it says get document URLs. So there's gonna, there might be, uh, you know, one or more. And it's up to you to determine whether you're going to give one or more and generate document ID. So that one is when the user is submitting a new document, right, clicking upload a document. Um, it, you upload the document to the actual repository and assign the document ID based on your logic that you then you know, decode here. So here is where you uh, assign a document ID, here is where you accept the document ID and kind of uh, look for the file. So that's the abstract class and all you need to do really is to implement it. So here is the generate document ID. Well, first I have to mention that this particular sample on MSDN uh, it uses GOIDs uh, to uh, for document IDs, with ob which obviously I don't think you want to use because otherwise your uh, users are going to have to remember GOIDs for document IDs. But it demonstrates it kind of serves the purpose of you know to demonstrate uh, what what's happening here, which I think you already got from the uh, from looking at the abstract class. But let's take a look at the code here. So um, to generate the, uh, the document ID, we just uh, kind of uh, take the ID of the list item and uh, and return it, and uh, the document ID framework takes that string. So all it asks from you is just a string, and it'll take care of assigning the properties and things like that. So that's that's what happens here. And here we're uh, we're retrieving the document, uh, the actual URL from the uh, from the site. So we have a uh, we have actual site where the request has been made um, so we have that given to us by the document ID framework and we have the ID that the us user has entered from here and uh, and here we we just perform our you know our search and uh, you know we have the site already so I guess we're gonna have to go through the webs and look for that document ID by whatever means we want to have uh, we, we want to use so in this case we just used for each loop right uh, maybe not the most efficient in a production scenario. You probably want to use something like queries and then perform your your own logic to find it. But uh, you know this demonstrates the purpose. And uh, so in here we're just going through through lists and then uh, looking for a particular ID in a list. And uh, once we found it, we return it. If we don't find it, we just return an empty array. And the last one, uh, but not least, is this uh, get sample document. ID text, so we're just here. We're just basically giving them uh, a string uh, that'll appear right over here. So technically, uh, when we deploy this document ID provider, um, it'll be registered with the, with our document center, and uh, we should see our sample string here. And when we upload a new document, that sample document should be assigned to. Sorry, that sample document ID should be assigned to the. Uh, um, to the document property. So uh, let's take a look at what's involved in feature, uh, an actual deployment of this uh, provider. So Charles is going to touch base on deployment through the um, through PowerShell, I believe. Uh, and here I'll demonstrate how you can deploy this particular document provider through the feature. So I mentioned that we're going to be using feature receiver. It's it's very simple actually. So on activation, right? So we have activated and deactivated. It's just a regular SharePoint feature. 
um, we just um, get a hold of the uh, existing site, right? And we have it from properties, and we just say register uh, register this particular provider, which is our class, right? We've seen it in here. Uh, register it with the with this particular site. That's it. So that's when the feature is activated. When the feature is deactivated, you know, you set the default provider. And the nice thing about it is that the default provider, SharePoint takes care of storing what was the previous provider. So it's not like you have to, you know, record the provider into the property, into property bag of the existing web, you know, saving it for later in case, and, you know, uh, activating your own, and then on deactivating, you have to retrieve the property. It's all taken care of by SharePoint. You just set it or set the default. That's it. So, um, so, so that's all that's involved. Uh, and obviously, in a production scenario, you would uh, you would build uh, this solution and uh, give your uh, infrastructure team a uh, WSP file, which I have here. Right? You would give them a WSP file, and they would go to central administration and install it. Or um, in your testing scenario, you would just click deploy solution, right? And if you're running SharePoint 2010 in your development machine, uh, you should see that the solution is installed. So it's adding it, deploying it, succeeded. Uh, let's now go back to our portal here and hit refresh because our solution was just deployed. So it'll take a bit for it to refresh. The, the IS has been recycled and try to upload something and uh, see how the document provider works. The page, and as you can see right away, uh, the, uh, the sample string has changed to whatever sample we've provided in our code. And when we click upload, pick a document from the list. On a development machine, it's always hard to pick a right document. And save it, and it went to the document library. Let's take a look at the document library and the properties of that document that we uploaded. Click view, and here it is. So the file name at the GUID, right? Whatever we've defined. So one of the things that you'll notice also is that uh, Michael mentioned earlier the uh, uh, document ID features, the site collection features. So if we go go to site collection features, you'll see uh, GUID document ID. Our feature has been has been activated. So that's pretty much it. I'll hand it over to Charles.